So you think that was crazy, right? No, <laughs> wait till you see the next one. Um, it was still gestures and interaction technologies. And then this next one, as you can see, it does look normal, right? Um, it has all these gear on him, uh, but it's, it's just awesome if you haven't seen it before. You know, people are talking about uh, having spider senses with augmented reality and, you know, shooting web at things and so on. But this, this guy actually implemented the spider sense system. He can actually feel what's happening around him. Coming all the way from University of uh, Chicago, Illinois. And almost ready. Ladies and gentlemen, Victor Mativizzi. Hello everybody, thank you for coming today and um, staying so late for my talk. Um, so my name is Victor Matevici and I'm going to talk today about sensing the environment through spider sense. So I'm a PhD student at the University of Illinois at Chicago and also a research assistant with the Electronic Visualization Lab. Uh, the Electronic Visualization Lab was established in 1973 by Tom DeFandi and Dan Sandin and currently director is Jason Lee. We do a lot of research on computer graphics, on data visualization, and interaction and collaboration techniques. And we are well known in the computer graphics world um, because we invented the cave. We also did the first computer graphics for the Star Wars movie, the first one. Um, and more recently, we have invented and built Cave 2. Um, so we are in Chicago. The building on the left is our building. Um, so the, so right now I'm wearing spider sense on me and you can see it. Um, the motivation behind this work was I took a class uh, that's named Human Augmentics at UIC. It's a new interdisciplinary um, class that is being taught by Jason Lee and Robert Kenyon. And uh, we, you know, we, the class was split into projects and everybody had to do something. Uh, in my project, uh, I teamed up with Brad Hagadon and Brian Kunzer. And what we had to do is we had to build something that can see and sense the invisible. Um, because it was a class project, our budget was around $500. Um, that's what the professor could um, you know, afford based on the budget he had. And we had a time constraint, three months, so we can, you know, we can pass the, the class and get the grade. Um, so we started um, you know, having brainstorming sessions and thinking on how can you see the invisible and how can you, how can you com communicate that information to the user? Um, and one thing we kind of realized immediately is that the way we interpret the world and the way we see the world is based on what our senses can feel. So for example, radiation is invisible, yet it is extremely deadly. It doesn't have any taste, it doesn't have any odor, it doesn't emit any sound. But if it is uh, you know, in a room, let's say it is right now with us for uh, any reason, then uh, we would definitely have problems um, in the future, at least. Comic heroes, on the other hand, and uh, you know, I'm a big fan of comic heroes, uh, they can detect some of those invisible threads through their superpowers. Daredevil, for example, uh, he ha he's blind, but he has an echolocation system that allows him to see the room and feel the room and navigate in the room. Spider-Man has spider sense. Spider-Man doesn't know how to fight, doesn't know martial arts, but because of spider sense, he can feel incoming objects, he can feel incoming threats. So the question is, how can we, can we do that? So like, how can we do that for humans? Technology today can detect some of those invisible threats, so why not use technology so that we can have some of those superpowers? So. For example, for the radiation example, Geiger counters can detect radiation, um, or infrared sensors can detect e infrared light, and ultrasonic microphones can detect ultrasonic sounds. All those are things that we, we cannot detect. 
And usually those, um, the hardware that detects, the, the, the technology that detects those kinds of things, they use displays and data, data visualization to communicate um, that to the user. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to um, explore an, a new way of uh, communicating data to the user. And um, we started thinking, and then one thing we realized is that there are millions of sensory receptors on our body, and actually visually handicapped rely on those receptors for information capture. And that is the way they communicate with the world. For example, they use the Braille alphabet. So why not um, use those receptors to convey information? And that is not a new idea. People have done research in the past probably 30 years on displays that are called tactile displays, and they use tactile stimuli to um, provide information to the user. This, the uh, device I'm wearing right now, is actually a tactile display. Um, so combining all the ideas that we had, we decided to build um, SpiderSense which is what I'm wearing right now. And what SpiderSense does is that it gives you an awareness of the surrounding environment. Um, and you can basically feel the room on your body. You can feel if somebody is approaching you from behind or from forward. And since uh, all the previous research focused on directional information, so like if you have something similar, how can you get from point A to point B? What we wanted to do is how, how can you communicate you know, the room on your body? Um, so, if you look on me, I actually have these ones, and these are the sensor modules, and on my back I have the controller box. The sensor modules are the ones that sense the environment around me. Uh, they are equipped with a proximity sensor that knows distance from objects and a servo motor, so this one right here, that the moment something is picked up, it rotates and it provides pressure feedback. So basically, as I get closer to an object, the more pressure I feel on my body. As I get further away, I feel less pressure. Um, that happens for, for all of them. And I have two on my back. Um, and the controller box, the box that controls all of them together and houses the logic of the system. So the algorithm is as follows. We begin with one of the sensor modules. They emit an ultrasonic signal, and then they wait for a reflection. And that reflection gets sent to the controller box, and that, using special algor algorithms, it computes uh, how much is going to rotate the servo arm, and uh, you feel that as pressure in our body. And then we go with the next sensor. Some of you now may ask, well, why are you doing that linearly? Why are you not doing it parallel? Well, the reason is because, as I said at the beginning, this was a class project. We didn't have a lot of, uh, we had a lot of restraints. Um, so the proximity sensors we use, all of them, they operate at the same frequency, which means that if I would operate two or more sensor modules at the same time, then I would have interference. Um, we did four types of uh, preliminary experiments. In the first preliminary experiment, this is Brian, he's wearing spider sense, and he was asked to navigate down a hallway. As you can see in the first experiment, he found the wall, and he's like, oh yeah, this is a wall. And in the second one, uh, in the second video, uh, he knows that I'm coming from behind him. In the second um, experiment, Brian again, he had to navigate, we went to the library, and he had to navigate through the bookshelves. Now, this is pretty challenging, even if you don't wear um, you know, spider sense and you, you're not blindfolded, because it's really narrow and you b constantly bump on the bookshelves. Um, so this was more challenging than we, than we expected. And basically, the most challenging part was there were shelves that had no books. So then Brian was confused, and he didn't know whether that is an opening or that's a shelf that you know, basically has no books. Because um, we, we gave him instructions, so we said to him, okay, go forward, second opening, go left, third opening, go right. And then we were monitoring and seeing if he can do that. So yeah, it, it was the experiment. We probably had to go somewhere with a um, um, bigger space between the bookshelves. Experiment number three, uh, this is Brian again. We took him out on the university campus and we asked him to just walk around 
and avoid obstacles, avoid pedestrians. If he sees something, he had to move his hand and of course um, ask him to not get killed. Um, but you know, we were, um, I was right behind him making sure he's not gonna bump into something dangerous. Um, so as you can see, he was able, he was moving his hand whenever he was you know, feeling somebody around him. And experiment number four, uh, Brian again, um, he is um, sitting, uh, so he's not basically moving, and he has ninja stars. And people are... <laughs> so people are approaching randomly. He doesn't know uh, where they're coming from. Some of them are actually circling around him. And what he has to do is he has to hit them with the ninja stars. As you can see, he's pretty good at that. I could say maybe 90% uh, accuracy. Um, so, some possible applications of spider sense. Um, w things that we envision is that um, two uh, basically bigger categories. One of them is for people that have a hearing or visual disability. It can compensate for that disability um, and help them navigate the world safer. Uh, as well as for people who do not have disabilities, um, they supplement the existing information that we have for the environment. And future work, things that we are looking into and working right now is experiment with different distance to rotation mappings. We want to do a longer term study, uh, see how people learn to use the device and how they adapt to stimuli, as well as uh, we're already working on having uh, soon a user study on visually impaired people. And um, do you want to do the quick, uh, do we can do a quick demo before I take questions. So I'm going to be the Green Goblin. Yeah, I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to point where he's moving around me. And that's so you can find me. OK. Wait, I need to be like this, actually. Ready? Yep. Sure? Uh-huh. All right, let's do it. All right, you got 90%. Thank you. Okay, we're, we're um, stealing time from the art gala, so one amazing question for Victor. Go ahead over there. What, what, what will happen if you double or triple the number of sensors you have? Will you be able to actually see farther or more around you? Um, based on my personal experience, if you are uh, inside the room, every time you move, like even small movements, uh, the sensors would move, which means that if you have more sensors, it would be more difficult for you to understand what's really going on. But if you are on an outside world where there are no obstacles, that would help you um, localize objects even better and understand what's going on. So, um, so this, is a, this question relates to what's going to happen if somebody wears the system for a, long, a longer term. Maybe you know, he's going to learn how to use it. All right. Thanks very much, Victor. Thank that you. was fantastic. <laughs> so folks, next we have the Art Gala reception in the Expo area. A lot of artists uh, showing their work and performing and the expo and food and drinks. It's going to be fun. And make sure to be back here at 6.30 for the Augie Awards, which will be fantastic tonight. See you later. <laughs>